The first African leader to attempt to bring Africa together was Nelson Mandela. He left the scene, then we got Muammar Gaddafi, who was a serious revolutionist. The things Russia and China are doing today, i.e. trading in their own currency, having their own version of SWIFT, these are all things that Muammar Gaddafi was talking about over 10 years ago. The man was ahead of his time. But because of his proposals, France was afraid of him, so was UK, and so was America. So they all did bomb raids on Libya and they armed his opposers to overthrow him. He was killed by his own countrymen. Since then, Libya has never risen to the same financial height. Back then, education was free. The Libyan government would pay for you to go study abroad and still pay you a stipend while you are abroad. That is how much money they were making off of the oil. Even in Kenya, oil Libya was such a big titan. Now we are having companies which I don't know they came from where. We are having Ola, we are having Total, we are having Shell. These are the people who are running the show now. But back then, oil Libya was a giant in Kenya and every other country inside Africa. Muammar Gaddafi and Libya were doing so well, but now the mighty have fallen. And now we are having President William Ruto arriving on the international scene. Not just as a president, but as a revolutionary. Personally, I'm yet to judge his delivery for Kenyans. I will do so after a year of his first finance bill. And that's not too far. By 2024, same time, we'll know if he's taking us in the right direction or not. But nonetheless, that's a local issue. On the international stage, President William Ruto is ruffling a lot of feathers. He is the first African leader to say that African leaders should not be jumbled into buses. No other leader complained about this before William Ruto became president. He is the same leader who also said that African leaders cannot appear all 54 of them in front of one gentleman. For example, the Africa-Russia summit. You find 54 heads of state appearing in front of Putin. US-Africa summit. You find 54 African heads of state appearing in front of Joe Biden. All these leaders had no problem with it until Ruto came along and he said, wait, hold on. That's an anomaly. We are not going to do that anymore. Again, Ruto is on record saying that we do not need to trade with a dollar. Let us trade in our local currency because there was a shortage in dollars and you have to and those dollars before you trade. So in this video, I want us to look into why is President William Ruto ruffling feathers on the international scene? Because he's fighting on two fronts. He's dealing with uh, the local Kenyan issues and he's also going viral on the African stage. We want to look at what he's trying to achieve and why he is doing this. But before we get into that, let's take a small commercial break. My name is David Wafula. I'm a local political analyst and this is what I do for a living. But as you know, no man is an island. I'm in a literal war with the fake news media and we need you private. If you're a communication, international relations or political science major and you believe you have what it takes to do what I do, then I need you to do two things for me. First, send your CV to topnotchrecruitkenya at gmail.com. Second, record a two minute video explaining how Kenya can get out of debt and tag me on any of the following social media handles. Your country needs you private. Adios. Now the first reason why President William Ruto is moving about like a Muammar Gaddafi reincarnate is because he smells weakness. The country that is known for spearheading the toppling of governments, which is America, currently has a very weak leader and they've lost sight of the entire scope. Every other day, Joe Biden is falling off of a staircase. Anytime he wraps up a speech, he can't find the exit. The Secret Service have to point for him the direction of the stage. His cognitive dissonance is declining. And also his party is not concerned with global matters. They are concerned with LGBTQ, the rights of transgender, and their preferred pronouns, he, she, they, and the binary and non-binary, whatever it is they're doing. That is the concern of the Democrat Party. The Republicans are the ones who are usually concerned with national matters. In fact, Republican presidents are the ones who start wars. It's only Donald J. Trump who did not start a war. And subsequently, they tried to impeach him 
twice. Again, if you look at the side of Russia, Russia is very busy in a war with Ukraine. And China is very happy to hear that there is an African president saying that we should move away from the American dollar. So no one really cares about a revolution starting in Africa right now. So if ever there was a point to start a revolution, now would be the time. The second reason why President William Ruto is starting a revolution in Africa is because he understands full well that if you go against the grain, like Muammar Gaddafi did, not only will the powers of the day fund your opposers, but they will also supply them with arms in an attempt to topple your regime. But Kenya is a country where this cannot work. Number one, if you fund our opposition leaders to orchestrate a coup, they'll just run off with your money. This is a country that is very corrupt. You will ask who is the ammunition, you will get stories. You love to launch an investigation into your own <laughs> funding of an attempted coup. The second reason, our leaders are not that sinister, irrespective of where they lie on either side of the divide. Martha Karua, Kalonzo Musioke, and Raylo Dinga and the others are not interested in arming Kenyans to go fight with guns. The only leader who might agree to such a thing is maybe Babu Owino, but I don't see any other leader who can agree to such a thing. So it is impossible to do that in Kenya. The only way to topple this government is by installing your own military on the ground, not by sending others to do your dirty work. So the president is very safe, the Kenyans agree with what he is saying, the entire African continent is behind him. An attempt of any military intervention in Kenya will attract the immediate rebuke of the African Union, all the African states and the BRICS towards the West. So the president knows that he is safe in what he is doing. Now the third reason why President William Ruto is doing this is to leverage his position on the international stage. Already he demands the respect of African states, he has the respect of foreign nations and you can see the leadership positions are just being given to him. Already he has been made the chairman of IGAD and that is under one year of being a president. So the man is a serious tactician, he knows how to play the long game and that is why he started campaigning in 2017. Right now President William Ruto is up to something. At the moment I can only speculate what he's trying to do. But he has an agenda, if the media ever get a chance to ask him what that agenda is that would be great. But otherwise, we'll have to wait and see as it unfolds. Now, as usual, guys, that's just my opinion. Do drop me on comments in the comment section below. I'll do my best to read them and to give you a response. And with that, I say adios. My name is David Wafula. I'm a local political analyst, and this is what I do for a living. But as you know, no man is an island. I'm in a literal war with the fake news media, and we need you private. If you're a communication, international relations, or political science major, and you believe you have what it takes to do what I do, then I need you to do two things for me. First, send your CV to topnotchrecruitkenya at gmail.com. Second, record a two-minute video explaining how Kenya can get out of debt and tag me on any of the following social media handles. Your country needs you private. Adios. Thank you for choosing David Wafula as your primary news platform. We put countless hours in research, recording, and editing. By showing up each and every day to watch our videos, you encourage us to generate more videos for the viewers. We are on a mission to inform, educate, and build a better tomorrow. To our thousands of followers in a world full of presidents, kings, and queens, you are the real gem. Adios.